Now, this is a follow-up video. In the first one, I touched on why the president fired his entire cabinet. In this second video, I want us to look into what this firing of the entire cabinet means for DP Rigathi Gashagwa and Raila Odinga because they are the two most affected people in this particular transaction. Now, when we look at DP Rigathi Gashagwa, my first question is, was he aware about this decision? Him being a truthful man, in the next few days or hours, he will come out and let us know. On top of that, remember, Rigathi Gashagwa has been very adamant about shares. In fact, he's been saying he's fighting to get the 15% or is it 20% of Mlima Kenya votes that was lost to Azimio so that they can consolidate as a block and increase their shares in the government of President William Ruto. And we are going to know whether these shares will remain the same or they'll be increased or they are going to be reduced in the next cabinet that is likely going to be formed in under one month. In fact, in two weeks or less, we should be having names forwarded to the National Assembly. We'll go through that list here on this platform and then we'll wait as the National Assembly grills them. What is your net worth? What are your qualifications? That is likely what's going to take place. So the question is, will the DP be able to retain the percentage that his region had in President William Ruto's cabinet, or is it going to reduce? That's the first tricky bit for DP Rigathi. And the reason why he needs to be very keen on that, and we are also going to be very keen on that, is the fact that if we see the shares, the positions that Mlima Kenya had, those that belonged to Moses Kuria, Kiture Kindiki, Alice Wahome, and so on and so forth, including Dungu of Treasury, if those positions are reduced, I would be worried if I am Rigathi Gashagwa because that means that the president is not going to pick him as his deputy in 2027. That is set on stone. And that is why it is very important for us to monitor how the shares of Mlima Kenya are going to be micromanaged. Will they stay where they are or are they going to reduce or are they going to increase? An increment is likely and likely. Uh, a status quo would be better if it stayed where it is. But if it drops and drops drastically, and on top of that, if the DP is not involved in the decision making of who is coming in or who can we bring back from the former team, that will be a very big red flag and it will show that the president is looking at a different direction. Where he's looking, I don't know, but time will tell. And by the way, let me just mention this since I forgot to do it in the other video. These guys who have been fired, Moses Kuria, Ndungu, Murkomen, most of these guys, especially those from the Mlima Kenya region, and other regions outside of uh, the Kalenjin area's strongholds, they are likely going to go on and form the opposition of the nation. They are going to join hands with the opposition. I don't know who the opposition is going to be. Some of those who are in opposition could be in government in a week's time or two, like Gladys Wanga, ETC. But those people are going to give the president a very big headache, and that's a headache he can't solve. If somebody is a CS and you fire them, what can you give them for them to feel compensated? You can't make them a PS. You can't nominate them as senator or MP. You can't send them abroad as ambassadors. You can only give them money. Good money for them to say, we are satisfied. We are exiting. And for most of these people, it's not even about money. It's about ego. Losing power. Kupoteza bendera. No cheska. You don't have the leverage and the power to say that this tender in this ministry should go there. That one should come here. So those people are going to be a very big headache for the president and uh, we are likely going to see most of those individuals pivoting to the opposition and becoming very big critics of the president. I think that's something he's prepared for. Let's wait and see. Now on the side of Raila Odinga, one thing we all know about Raila Odinga is the fact that in every government, if there is an opportunity, he must be inside. It's just this morning when we talked about his handshake with Kibaki, his handshake with Uhuru, his handshake with uh, President Ruto, and each time getting something out of it. Nusumkate with Kibaki, after the handshake with Uru Kenyatta, he almost got the BBI, but he was being funded 5 million from State House every single day during the campaigns. In the handshake with President Ruto, he's supposed to get the NADCO report, a bit of uh, IEBC commissioners. I feel the president will decide not to give him any IEBC commissioners and opt to give him a few positions in his cabinet because that's less consequential and those are people he can fire. But either way, Raila is going to be looking to form the next government, which is in a week or two from now. Not necessarily he himself being a part of it, but his inside people 
like Gladys Wanga who was present during the signing of the IBC bill at KICC I am very suspicious that if Raila was to put forward a name it would be Gladys Wanga and we are likely going to see the DG in Homa Bay becoming the governor those are things that I'm looking at and I think Raila is a very great opportunist a seasoned one at that and this is a chance for him to get in government So those are the two people who are likely going to be affected. If the shares of Mlima Kenya decrease, it means the DP is on his way out and is likely not going to be selected as President Ruto's deputy in 2027. And if Raila is able to get his people in government, it means that the president is looking to form a new political alliance. But at the end of the day guys, that's just my opinion. That's how I'm reading things in the political landscape. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'm sure other viewers will be eager to see what others have to say and uh Having said that guys if you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to YouTube search for Divido Fula hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.